So we're back in solo queue and this time we are going to play our jumping cat lady. And yes, this was a Shinman reference. Now to my own reference. Hello my friends! In this match the picks are fine. The enemy has some really good picks. Only Granger is not really in the meta right now. But by no means we got anything. I have the only problem that I don't have the right talent for 1-1 yet. You should use weakness finder on her instead of electro flash. Flash? Flash. But since I haven't leveled up my emblem enough yet, I can't use it. Oh well, the curse of using a second account. Since we're still in epical glory, we're on the 2v2 on the gold lane. We managed to get a very good start. We took half of Bea's HP away and made her way a flicker. With 1-1, you can deal a good amount of damage with her first skill and stun the enemy with it. And since I got some backup here, I can be quite aggressive. In a 1v1 against Brody, Beatrix or Clint for example, I would play passive though. Because they can deal much more damage in the early game than you can. 1-1 in the end is all about her ult. So if you wanna be a good 1-1 player, you always need to be able to activate your ult. You will see plenty of examples in this video and also some in the future ones. Here I didn't play it perfect. As a mem, you should be behind your tank and not near the enemy. If I wouldn't have lost so much HP, I could have been even more aggressive and forced the first blood. One advice that I can give you is watching the replays of your matches. You can learn so many things by watching it and realize the mistakes that you made. Even when you are a really good player, there is always something new to learn from your last game. Since the wave was there and my ages was up, I choose to take a little risk here to clean it before recalling. This can be a mistake though. As you can see here, the Granger went into his jungle. If he would have come to the lane and had his ult available, he could have shooten me to the moon just. My ages wouldn't have been enough to save me. Sometimes it's better to miss a wave and play safe instead of risking to get killed, feed the enemy with it and to miss the next wave because of it. Risk calculation is many times the key element in the match. High risk can mean high reward or high loss. So in the early game it's most of the time better to take a low risk to not feed the enemy. Because being on the lane against a fat enemy is a nightmare. Especially when nobody helps you. Kagura rotated top which is good. So it's time for an epic montage. <laughs> So, there's a lot to learn from this single scene alone. Kagura made one big mistake here and this is something that so many players do wrong all the time. The timing of her ambush is horrible. Since she attacked the Beatrix already, she retreated already into her turret before I even arrived. If Kagura would have waited until I'm in position to join the gank, we could have killed them both easily. Now like this, I have to activate my ult on Tigreal and have no chance to kill Beatrix with it. So please, wait with your ambush until your teammates are in position. If that was not enough, Vale ambushed me. But luckily, he used his combo wrong. Either use your ult first, followed by the knockup and the first skill, or use the knockup skill and then your ult and first skill. He used the knockup skill, followed by his first and then his ult. Which is why I could escape the ult before it hit me. For that he died, because of Sylvana's damage and because I used the stun ability of my first. 1-1 one -one can be a good stunner, if you use her first skill smart. The Tigreal died unnecessary here. He could have stayed under his turret to defend, but instead chose to stay in the bush, which I saw on the minimap. We skip a bit forward and Sylvana will arrive with a rival. Let's just quickly activate our old on Tigreal. Oh well. I got too arrogant here and thought it will be an easy game. I mean we are still in epical glory, right? So I wasn't really expecting that these enemies actually pull off such a good ambush. So I rightfully paid for this mistake with my life. In this situation, only Tigreal was visible on the map. So it should have been obvious to not engage now. I'm just joking of course. This was all intentional to demonstrate to you how you shouldn't do it. Yep. The next engage almost failed as well. This time I was aware where everyone was. But Bea's ult deals a lot of damage. We could kill the Tigreal though. And Bea only escaped in the last second with her flicker. So I could take half of the turret's HP away. Next, you have another example of underestimating the enemy. Sad that the same mistake happened twice for me here. For this one mistake, I lost my outer turret. What means this whole area is unsafe from now on. And that's why turrets are so important. They're not giving you much gold 
or XP, but some safety from your enemies. If 4 enemies decide to attack us now, we have no chance to retreat anymore. Next, Bea made a mistake though. Chasing an enemy is most of the time a bad idea, as I mentioned in the last video. After Aemon took out Vale, we could easily push the rest of the turret away. Next I cleared 2 minion waves, simply to get more farm for myself and now I'm observing what everyone is doing. Granger died, what means we have a nice chance to force a gang now. Or simply push one lane, because there are obviously less enemies to defend it. We did both. Paquito died in a 1v3 and we pushed the mid lane. We didn't destroy the turret though, but killed Bea easily. My team also took the turtle, so from this you can see that we clearly have the upper hand here in the last minutes. Next we went on to steal the red buff. Hey yo, what the? Now you may ask why I retreat instead of forcing the kill on Vale. This was another good example regarding risk calculation. I could have maybe killed him, but the three other enemies were still around with their ults available. We were only three and neither Silvana nor me had their ults available. And since we have the upper hand anyway, it's not worth taking a risk for one more kill. Just take the one kill you already got and move on. When you see a message like this, I would strongly advise to just let the enemy fight. If they are toxic to each other, let them tear each other apart and just keep playing. Don't interact with them in any way, like laughing at them for example. If you become the number one enemy, they could suddenly play as a team and your laughter will backfire. One thing you could do though is targeting the negative player. Make them so angry that they give up even more and drag the whole team down. As you can see, we just pushed top and I activated my ult in a more interesting way. If an enemy is still marked, you can easily use that to your advantage like this. In the meanwhile, Aemon just wiped up the whole enemy's team. Here it's important, if you have the chance to end the game, focus purely on the base. Don't focus on the enemies in this situation, because the enemy's base is the worst place to gank. So we finished this game before we got even to the fun part with 1-1. One -one. This will be different in the next video though. Since this was a pretty easy game, you can check out the first episode of this series, where I play together with Emiya that has a win rate of 43%. Also, a huge shout out to my patrons Twisted J, Mist, Corbear, and Garo OP. If you want to support my work as well, here you have a link for the page. See you over there!